The Lord be with you. I want to, as I do every Sunday, invite you to take your copy of Holy Scripture. And I know it'll be on the screen, maybe if it's, but still take your own Bible. I want you to look with me at the book of Philemon. I'll wait as you try to find it, because it's right before Hebrews. The main reason is because I want you to notice its breadth, but also when you walk out this place this morning, you can not only say, well, yeah, we read from the Bible. You can say you read a whole book of the Bible while you were at church. Letter of Paul to Philemon. Again with verse 1, we're going to read the whole thing this morning. Paul a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Apphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful, both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. One more thing. Prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping through your prayers to be restored to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greeting to you, and so do Mark, Ratarchus, Dema, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. May God bless the reading and hearing of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? And now, O God, help us to hear what you would have us to hear me to say, Lord, what you would have me to say. Help us, Lord, to do what you would have us to do so that we may be the people you call us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so before this morning, how many of you have read Philemon? Raise your hand. All right, that's good. The rest of you will talk after church. All right, now those of you who did raise your hand, how many of you knew it was pronounced Philemon? You probably said Philemon, uh, Philomen, Philemon. I don't even know if it's Philemon, to be honest with you. I'm just being confident with it. I don't, I don't blame you if you've skipped over it. You see how small my Bible is. It doesn't even take up a whole page, Philemon. It's an interesting little letter of Paul's. I wonder sometimes why the councils included it in our canon. I'm sure it was because, well, if you read the language, it's Paul. It's all over the place. It's Paul. The Greek is simply Paul. And perhaps the church at Colossae, where Philemon was likely the head of the house that met, where the church met there, 
held on to this letter. By the time the councils met in the third and fourth centuries, they said, well, this is clearly from Paul. We have to put it in there. I'm not sure what we'll get out of it. But Philemon was a book that was read particularly in this part of the country for a long time in the 18th and 19th centuries. Because in Philemon, Paul, Paul is very personal, writing to a friend named Philemon about one particular individual named Onesimus. And from what we can gather from this postcard robbed from the post box at Colossae, Onesimus once belonged as a slave to Philemon. And in this short little letter, Paul seems to be suggesting to Philemon that he welcome his slave Onesimus back as a brother. There's no clear evidence, really, that Paul is suggesting that Philemon free Onesimus. And so preachers in the South during the 17 and 1800s took to this letter to say, See, slavery is okay by the Bible. See, you runaway slaves, if you're out there listening, the Bible says you better go back to your masters. I don't know. I don't want to get out in the weeds. I hope I don't have to tell you that slavery is not condoned by the Spirit of Christ Jesus. I hope I don't have to tell you that. But what I, what I do know about this letter is that when Paul writes to his friend Philemon, he is writing for a very specific reason. Onesimus has clearly done something to Philemon. He's run away, yes, that's one thing. To a slave owner in ancient Rome, to lose a slave was not only to lose some productivity in the house, but frankly to lose a valuable piece of property. It's the only sort of property that can rob itself from its master. And so when Paul is in house arrest, either in Ephesus or Rome, we're not sure at this point, this Onesimus finds himself in prison with Paul. He would have known who Paul was. Philemon is definitely at Colossae where Paul had preached. And Philemon was, def- was most likely the owner of the house where this church met. And so Onesimus would have known Paul, at least by name and reputation. And so in prison, Onesimus comes to be with Paul and to hear of Christ and to accept Him as his Savior. And Paul encourages Onesimus to return back to his house, back to the house of Philemon, but in so doing sends this letter ahead to say, Philemon, welcome this one back, this one who has robbed you, this one who has wronged you, this one who has hurt you. Welcome him back. And don't simply wipe the slate clean and then send him into the kitchen to wash the dishes. Welcome him back, Paul says, no longer as a slave in verse 16, but more than a slave, a beloved brother. It would have been looked down upon, even among the Romans, to enslave one's own family. And so Paul cleverly talks to Philemon and says, Onesimus is not only only restored to you, he is your brother and no longer a slave. What's interesting, if you look down here in, verses, in verse 11, Paul says to Philemon, Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful. Do you know what the word useful is in Greek? Onesimus. Once he was no longer, once he was not useless to you, now his very name means he's useful. Restored back to you as a brother in a house church. There in Colossae. So Paul says, if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. And if he's wronged you, put it on my account. In verse 19, Paul says, I'm writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. But here's the thing. Paul doesn't get out of prison. Paul doesn't come to Colossae, even though in the end he says, oh, by the way, one more thing. Could you put the covers out on the couch? Could you pull the hide of bed out? I'll be coming over. I'm going to be staying a while. I'm allergic to cats. Could you get the hair up? That sort of thing. Paul says, I'm coming, but he's not. He doesn't make it. He knows, perhaps even then, and maybe even so does Philemon, that Paul's not going to repay whatever debt Onesimus owes his master. And yet he encourages him 
to welcome him back. Now here's the thing, we don't know what happened. We don't know if Philemon said, sure, let Onesimus come back in the house. We don't know if Philemon freed Onesimus, welcomed him as a brother, gave him his own property. We don't know if Onesimus turned, or if Philemon turned all the way away from slavery, releasing all the slaves in his house. We don't know. Onesimus could have been met at the door and said, no, no, you've wronged me too much. Go away. I don't want to know you anymore. I don't know. Maybe Onesimus wouldn't have liked the idea. I wouldn't have been too wild about it. A slave escaped from my master to find someone who leads me in the way of Christ and then says, by the way, go back. Go back and be enslaved once more. I don't think I'd do it, friends. I'd head for Canada. I don't think I'd do it. So we don't know if Onesimus even did it. But what we do know is that Paul, the command of Christ, calls a brother who has been wronged by another to welcome him back. We do know that Christ commands Paul, and as Paul commands us through Scripture and the Spirit of Christ, if we've wronged someone else, to go back as a brother. We know that Paul commands in Scripture that if someone has wronged us, to put it on his account and to welcome them back as a brother or sister in Christ. How hard, how hard that can be to know someone has wronged you hurt you, robbed you, scarred you so deeply. And yet here, in a, a letter that is easy to, to pass from Titus to Hebrews, the words from Paul, Philemon, welcome him back as you would a brother. Whatever wrong he's done to you, forget it. Put it on my account. Forget it. Welcome him back. It's hard. Right now, in your own mind, there's someone. You know who it is. I don't know who it is. Maybe the person sitting next to you doesn't know who it is. Right now, there's some Onesimus to your Philemon. There's someone in your life who has wronged you, hurt you, and gone away. Maybe they didn't physically move. They may be sitting on the same pew with you. I don't know. But someone who scarred you, hurt you. And the words from Scripture say, welcome them back. Welcome them back. I don't know if they'll come back. I don't know if you'll want them back. I don't know if Anesimus went back, and I don't know if Philemon wanted him back. All I know, and all I can tell you this morning, is that the command from Scripture says to welcome them back. To welcome them back as a brother and sister in Christ. No exception. No counting the sins that came before. But to welcome them back. Not bad for a little short letter. Not bad for a little postcard we've robbed from history. If someone has wronged you, welcome them back as a brother or sister in Christ. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, the one who calls the apostles, who calls us, commands us, Lord, even when we have been hurt, even when we have hurt others, to be reconciled to one another as sisters and brothers in you. Help us, God, in these next moments as our minds think of those who have hurt us, of those whom, Lord, we have hurt. God, give us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us to seek forgiveness and reconciliation. God, help us, Lord, to see that 
In the end, whatever it is that stands between each of us, none of it is greater than you. So Lord, call us. Call us back to one another. As Paul called Philemon and Onesimus, but you were calling us and that one who has hurt us or that one whom we have hurt. Lord, help us to seek your grace and your love in those relationships and situations. Help us, Lord, to be welcomed back and to welcome those, Lord, who have hurt us. Be with us now, Holy Spirit, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.